Hi guys, today is going to be all about ranges on our descriptive statistics series here. That is ranges and IQR, interquartile ranges. Now, if you want to see the rest of the videos in the series, head over to zstatistics.com. That's my website where I've got a whole bunch of statistical resources for you, including the rest of the elements of this series and some stuff on regression, hypothesis testing, you names it. Now let's get stuck straight into uh, probably one of the more simple statistical measures today. And it's the first one where we're going to start to deal with this concept of dispersion or spread. So this shouldn't take us too long. We're just going to look at the definition of these two different quantities. And then we'll have a look at how they both apply in a box and whisker plot, where we'll be able to visually inspect our range and interquartile range. So let's consider this ordered data set, which has seven elements. Now, as I said, the range is a measure of the spread of the data set, and it's simply the maximum value minus the minimum value. So 13 minus two is gonna give us a range of 11. Pretty straightforward, right? So what then is the interquartile range? And importantly, why do we need it? Well, let's have a look at the definition first. The interquartile range is going to be the third quartile minus the first quartile. So if you recall from the previous video on quantiles, where we looked at quartiles, the first quartile is that number in the series, which is, a, which is about a quarter of the way into the data set. The second quartile is two quarters of the way into the data set. In other words, that's the median. And the third quartile is three quarters into the data set. So instead of being the maximum minus the minimum, this is going to be quartile three, which is 10, minus quartile one, which is two which gives us an interquartile range of eight. Now, if you're worried as to why these two are exactly quartile one and quartile three, then you best head back and have a look at how we calculate quartiles. But for the sake of this video, we're just interested in why we bother dealing with interquartile ranges when we've already got something to measure the spread, which was the range in itself. So what possible benefit do we have from using this interquartile range? Well, let's think of it this way. Imagine instead if the maximum value was not 13. Let's just say the maximum value happened to be 58. So everything else was the same, except we had this huge outlier as one of the values. Now the range for this data set becomes 56. It's the maximum minus the minimum. And it seems to suggest that this data set has a very large spread. But in reality, most of the data points are very close to the first data point, which is two. It's only this last one, which is very extreme, it seems. So you can see here that range is susceptible to outliers. And that often gives us a, an incorrect impression of how spread the data is. But you'll notice that the interquartile range here hasn't changed. It's still 10 minus 2 giving us 8. So the presence of one outlier here doesn't affect our interquartile range, but it does affect our range. Now there are different applications for each of these. Sometimes you just want the range. You want the maximum minus the minimum. But other times you want to try to avoid this outlier problem here. So let's have a look at the box and whisker plot now. So the inspiration for this example here is my increasing addiction to Messina ice cream, which is just up the road from my place. Dangerously, I should say. So here are all of the flavors from Messina. Don't ask me what Nikki Glasses is, but uh, if you're telling me that there's a better flavor than pistachio praline, you are out of luck, my friend. It is the clear winner for mine. Nonetheless, we're actually assessing the grams of sugar in each scoop of these ice creams. So pandan and coconut has the most sugar and yogurt and caramel has the least down the bottom here. Now, of course, there's many flavors in between, but I'm just showing you the top ones and the bottom ones here. Completely fictionalized, by the way. I don't 
actually want to know how many grams of sugar there are in each of those uh, scoops. So, if pandan and coconut's the maximum and yogurt and caramel is the minimum, we can kind of draw, this is called a box and whisker plot. These whiskers, which is the black bits, go from the minimum to the maximum. And then we have this box in the middle with three horizontal lines. Now, you can probably guess that these lines are going to be the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. Now, in this configuration, this is a vertical configuration of a box and whisker plot. Sometimes you'll see it horizontal. So obviously it would go from left to right, going from quartile one to quartile two to quartile three, etc. But here quartile one is on the bottom of the box, the medians, the middle strip, and the quartile three is the top part of the box. And then you've got the maximum and minimum being the whiskers. Now, I might just make a note here to say that some statistical packages, when they draw up this box and whisker plot, will exclude outliers from the maximum and minimum value. So, the ends of the whiskers would represent those values, the maximum and minimum, not including those values considered to be too extreme or outliers. And it'll depend on the statistical software what their criteria is for declaring observations an outlier. Anyway, you get the sense here that you can see this interquartile range, which is the difference between the bottom and top of the box versus the range itself, which is the difference between the whiskers. So we can calculate those pretty simply. Maximum minus minimum, which is 26.1 minus 12.2, and that gives us 13.9 is our range. And the interquartile range is just going to be the 23.5 minus 19.1. Now, I, I just pulled these out of thin air, but let's just presume that they are indeed quartile 3 and quartile 1 for this data set. And hopefully you get a sense of how box and whisker plots are quite useful as well. Each section has 25% of the data. So we've got 25% of the ice cream scoops up here in the top whisker. We've got another 25% between the median and the third quartile, another 25% between the first quartile and the median, and we have 25% of the data down here as well. So this is more sort of spread out. So this gives us the impression that there's only maybe a couple of low sugar ice creams down here. and They kind of spread out over this range from 19.1 to 12.2 whereas most of the ice creams actually exist above 19.1. So there you have it. A simple little video for range and interquartile range. The rest of these videos on this bottom line here are going to be alternate classifications of spread. And they're going to get a little bit more statistically robust as well. So stick around for those. Go to zstatistics.com if you want to skip through to any of these videos or indeed any video I've created over the last 10 years or so. But thanks for watching. My name's Justin Zeltzer. And if you dig this, feel free to like the video, subscribe and do all that kind of stuff. And I also have a podcast which is called Jeremy's Iron. You can find that on the website too.